Shalom, Sister Kate here. We are always so busy just doing the things on the homestead. I've got to do two things at once. Got to take this billy goat back down to where the girl goats are and I'm going to shoot a real quick video for one of the guys. Sorry, there have been so many comments and so many people. I am now not able to remember each and every person's comment. But one of the guys asked, what are the basic tenement, tenants of the Hebrew Israelite movement? And I have videos about that on my web page. You can go back through there and look for them. Um, Pastor Joe Fox at Viking Preparedness Channel has videos on that. Um, <clears throat> there's a lady named This Old Homestead who is also on YouTube. She has probably at least five videos on basic things that the Hebrew Israelites believe. But for the sake of uh, getting this out quickly so you don't have to go through a million videos to do it, I'll go through about the top three. He asked me the top three. I, I can't even find your post anymore. I'm sorry. I just don't have time. I went through my first three pages of comments and it wasn't there. And so here, here they are. One, you have to believe in God, and we are talking about the same God that is in all the Christian Bibles. God is simply a title. His name is I Am. He says that himself, and it is also stated as yud Hey vav Hey, or Yahweh, because uh, the language does not have any stipulation for vowels. Lots of people pronounce it many, many different ways. They call it Yahweh and uh, Yahweh and just uh, many different things. Let it be known, even if you think you're using the very absolute proper name, your salvation does not rest on using his name absolutely correctly. At least that's what we believe. Two, his son is Jesus. Jesus the Christ, which is a Greek a uh, transliterated version of his name, which was Yeshua, Y-S-H, and then some kind of vowels at the end. Um, Joshua is probably the exact same name. He is Yahweh's son, and he is the Messiah that was foretold in the entire Old Testament. He's also mentioned in the Old Testament as the... Uh, priest who is Melchizedek and he's mentioned again in the New Testament. So that is who Jesus is. Hebrew Israelites believe that not the entire law, but because it's just easier to say it that way, the Torah, the encoded or codified laws in the Old Testament, 613 of them, at least some of them are still in effect. We start out believing they're all in effect until we get to the point that Yeshua replaced the priesthood um, and there is no temple because the Romans destroyed it. So all the laws relating to the priests and the temples are no longer in effect because the Melchizedek priesthood, the one uh, talked about in the New Testament, has replaced it because that one became corrupted. However, there are still plenty of laws there that make common sense like you can't sleep with your family members and you have to have even scales when you're doing business and you can't change the borders of your property to cheat your neighbor are still in effect and there's i think it's james 5 again look at me i you know i can't look this up right now but you can maybe uh talks about the laws keep to the laws that you have been given and so there are at least probably about 200 most of them are covering how to uh, worship Yahweh correctly and how to be a good Israelite and a good neighbor to people. And it is summed up, as it's said in the New Testament, with love God with everything. And the second is like unto it, love your neighbor as yourself. The correct interpretation of neighbor, based on the Hebrew language, the culture, and the context in the Bible, is not every Tom, Dick, and Harry out there. Um, it is a believing person. So you are to love all believers as yourself, and you are to try to get along with them, and you're not to hate them, and so on and so on. All the neighbor stuff is talking about other believers. Um, so one of the very first things as a believer that the Father talks about is his feasts and his Sabbath. 
he established the Sabbath as a day of rest. He did it himself in the beginning in the creation, and then all his people kept that Sabbath. It is his gift to us. It is not a burden, as the modern church tries to teach it. So, if you're a modern Israelite, and the reason I keep using that term is you are grafted into the tree that is in Israel that's mentioned in uh, Romans 11. There are natural branches because they, of their unbelief, and their unbelief was that Yeshua was the Messiah. They had the Jews, the original blood people of Yahweh, had in the Old Testament all the foretelling of a Messiah coming, and they had seen many, many false messiahs come. And if you look at the New Testament with the eyes that Jesus and his apostles are trying to establish that Jesus was that Messiah, that is the belief that they're trying to get all the Jews of that day to believe and couldn't be as successful as they wanted. And so Paul uh, and Peter get the revelation that they can bring this message to the Gentiles and that's where the whole Christian church comes out of. But the Christian church, modern, looks at this book as if it were written for them and it was not. It was definitely written for the people back in that day to explain to them what was happening. So that's one of the things. Another thing, so you got to keep Shabbat, you got to look at his feasts and you got to keep them too. And there's seven feasts total. There's an awesome video on YouTube called Truth or Tradition by Jim Staley that kind of goes over that. Um, another tenet of the Hebrew Israelite way is to understand the world through the Eastern mindset, which is do, then understand, instead of the Western mindset, which we all have now, understand, then do. So that's something. So even in this MGTOW movement, to apply that would be do things that men do, then understand what it is to be a man. And I'll get into that in another video. So that's, one is the, the Godhead, two is the actions, and three is you cannot eat certain food. God establishes what is uh, defined as food in Genesis. And so you cannot eat that stuff. The unclean things. Noah's Ark had uh, clean animals for sacrifice in there. And they never tell that in the, the modern stories of you know, a Noah's Ark. They only talk about the pairs of the animals for breeding. They never talk about the clean and unclean animals that are also there. So you can't eat pork, you can't eat shellfish, you can't eat uh, catfish. There's, it's right there in Genesis, look it up yourself. But you adhere to that because God created you and he has a plan. If you read the entire Bible, the plan is there. The context of it is not 1600s England, it's not 21st century America. It is biblical times when those people were actually alive walking around and the rules and the setup and the whole plan that we talk about, including marriage and roles for men and women, is in that book. It's a complete thing, but you have to look at it, and you cannot look at it as a modern American. You have to look at it in context. If you want more information, look at Pastor Joe's um, sermons. Look at 119 Ministries. Look at this old Homestead's videos, and I've got a few videos of my own about it. It'll become much, much clearer. I hope this helped. I gotta go. This guy is acting like a maniac. All right, shalom.